We are about to have a very interesting conversation about how sports can spur economic activity on the continent. Um, I'll do a quick introduction. My name again is Nana Pia Korang. I'm particularly excited about this panel because I am the director on Silverbacks Holdings, and that's an investment holding company that invests in sports. And we are the co-owners of the Cape Town Tigers, which is part of the Basketball Africa League. So this conversation is timely, it's exciting. And with me to discuss, I will start uh, from my immediate right, is Strauss. Strauss Zelnick, he is the CEO of Take-Two Interactive. If you've ever played NBA 2K like my son does, you have him to thank for. So please, let's give him a warm welcome. And next to him, we have uh, President Orama, who needs no introduction. He is the president and uh, the chairman of the board of directors of the Africa Exim Bank. So a round of applause for him as well. And next to him is Tamika Tremaglio. Uh, she is the executive director of the National Basketball Players Association. Mm. So this is the union uh, that works with the NBA players and really happy to have her here to understand exactly what they are looking to do on the continent as well. So warm applause for her as well. So just to set the stage for this conversation, I just wanted to uh, uh, frame it with this statistic. So when we look at the sports economy uh, worldwide, it represents 5% of the GDP, worldwide GDP. However, when we look at Africa, that is estimated to be about 0.5% of GDP. For me as an investor, it's really exciting because it represents a lot of potential. Potential for investors, potential for our youth, potential for our African countries, potential for our athletes, and a lot of business opportunities as well. Uh, so I just wanted to start off there and, and sort of frame our conversation with that. And so I will turn over to President uh, Orama. Um, I think we all can say that in terms of talent on the continent, as far as sports is concerned, there's no, we, we can't deny that. Africa has a lot of talent. We have the youth, we have uh, the natural talent, the natural resources. Uh, President Orama, um, how is your uh, organization, Africa, Africa Exim Bank, taking advantage, looking to capitalize on this opportunity? Oh, thank you very much. And let me um, also start by um, thanking the organizers, the Gavi, the, um, uh, the Basketball League, and all those who made this, uh, this possible, and who invited me to participate. Now, as we look at the continent of Africa, and try to turn it around. <clears throat> we have to look at where our greatest assets are. Uh, all too often, we think, we, we always say, our natural resources are our greatest assets. We, we think instead that our people are the greatest assets. Right. A continent that has so many young people uh, that can entertain in many ways. A continent that has a history of entertainment, even when we speak, right. some can dance to the speech. Right. So the, <laughs> and you just spoke about the opportunities that's, that we see there. Uh, the differences in terms of the share of sports in GDP globally and in Africa. Africa today, the size of this, the sports market is about $7 billion. That is extremely low. Um, in a, in a place where you have huge youth unemployment, uh, a place where those who have access to television, to the cable, watch uh, sports that are produced, content that are produced elsewhere. Whereas before, uh, um, be in the past, say, 30 years, about 30 years ago, 20 something years ago, we were watching what we were doing in the continent. The problem was that it was not commercialized. Right. I think the, 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 the thing to do for Africa is to begin to commercialize sports. Right. Uh, it's when we commercialize sports, 
that we get is full, we get to the full potential, full value there. And commercializing it um, can come in different ways. There are so many opportunities uh, that can come as soon as we begin to do that because the sports value chain extends from the infrastructure you develop to the, to the training of the talents, to the entrepreneurship it brings, to all the other things uh, that come with it. Uh, but commercializing will require that we do the kind of thing the, uh, the basketball uh, here at, in uh, Africa, for example, for which we've entered a partnership with them, a centrifugal partnership that will help build the infrastructure, do um, train the talent, and also help those who can supply into that business. We are uh, committing funding under the Creative Africa Nexus, a uh, creative, um, uh, uh, creative uh, strategy instrument that we are using. Uh, we are committing uh, about, uh, we did $1.5 billion and that included sports. We doubled it to $3 billion. And that has now enabled us now to begin to commit funding to building the infrastructure, making sure we elevate the infrastructure that are available, making sure that we support training and capacity building, and we create the partnerships that are required. We also are beginning to, um, to, 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 to support uh, organizations and countries uh, that have programs that not just promote sports as an activity, right. but also promote it as a business. Right, right, right. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So now, Tamika. So you sit at the NVPA. Could you tell us uh, what is driving your interest uh, in, uh, in Africa's economy's growth? Yes, absolutely. So first of all, thank you so much for having me. Of course, as you can appreciate, it is a privilege to be able to serve our 450 players that make up the NVPA. Right. There are about 50 of whom came directly from Africa that are part of that 450. So either born there or first generation. So as you can imagine, this is critically important to them. Right. And we are a player-led organization. Right. So not only are players in a position where they want to give back and make sure that they're doing things there that are meaningful, that helps them to serve their purpose, right. they also want to be part of developing the infrastructure that you talk about. Here in the U.S., of course, our players are so commercialized, and I heard you talk about that. The reality, though, is that they do so much from a philanthropic standpoint. Right. They are focused on how they can educate. So Bismack, who was just up here, talked about what he's doing, but he'll spend some time this afternoon talking about what he's doing around education, right. how he's built a hospital in Congo. Those are the things that are critically important to our players, is what they are doing to impact the future generations. And while that does have a lot to do with the infrastructure and certainly the investments that they're making, this is a priority for them. So being the head of their union, it is a priority for us as well to make sure that these goals are getting accomplished, both on and off the court. Wow, that's, that's amazing. Thank you. OK, so now attend my attention to Strauss. I'm not following those. <laughs> <laughs> to Strauss. Um, who knows everything about gaming. <laughs> but Strauss, I mean, on a serious note, I wanted to get a sense of what, um, what you think the growth potential is. So there's sports, <coughs> but there's also gaming, which uh, is growing on the continent. It's very popular on the continent. How, what do you think is the growth potential for, for gaming for the continent? Well, it's huge, and, and I think what we're hearing is that everything in and around sports is underrepresented in the continent right. of Africa. Right now, the video game business is the biggest entertainment business on Earth. It's bigger than film, uh, bigger than television, bigger than music combined. It's about a $180 billion market. But in Africa, that market is only about a billion dollars, so it's terribly underrepresented. About 40% of the population in the continent <coughs> has access to a connected mobile device, right. and there are about 250 million active players. So player penetration is low, even given the number of connected devices, and the number of connected devices right. is low. Um, and why is that relevant to you? Because uh, video games are an enormous economic engine. 
Um, first of all, they benefit consumers. It's a great form of entertainment. Right. Uh, but secondly, it's an economic engine for the 55 countries in Africa uh, where our, our gamers reside. So uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to just give you a sense of the numbers. In the past 12 months, about 500,000 people in the continent have engaged with NBA 2K. Should be a lot more. Should be like 5 million people or 10 million people. Um, and for those of you who are familiar with the title, and many of you are, uh, it is the most beloved title in the sports business um, after soccer, after FIFA, which is also a big deal in Africa. So there's plenty of room for growth, and we'd very much like to be part of that growth. Fantastic. I'm happy to hear that. Just one more question for you, Strauss. Um, what are some of the key takeaway lessons, just based on your experience here uh, in the American markets, what are some of the key takeaways that um, you could share with the audience, uh, you know, financial institutions, investors alike? What are some of those takeaways that we should have at the back of our minds? Well, look, uh, promoting uh, economic viability is in everyone's interest. I mean, right. to create opportunities for jobs. This is a young continent. The median age, as you know, is uh, 18 years. So it's the youngest continent on Earth. And providing opportunity for that population is what's going to drive the future of Africa and also <laughs> benefit our business. Right. Listen, we're doing, we're doing just fine worldwide. Um, we, we don't need any help, thank you. But we would like to be part of being a positive influence in the world. From our company's point of view, we're still largely a U United States and Western European business, about 80% of our revenue. And yet in 10 years, if, if that's 80% of our revenue, we will have been left behind. The few, I was just meeting with my team in the UK for a business visit, and you know, it's very tempting for executives, as, as you know, to focus on what's in front of them. That's what they tend to work on. And I said, but let's look 10 years down the road. Where we need to focus now is the Middle East, India, and Africa. That's where the population is. That's where the population is growing. People love interactive entertainment. Where are we? So um, I think many people, many executives will say, you know, there isn't enough economic value there for me to focus on. The reason I'm here today and the reason I care about the region is I'm not playing for today or tomorrow or the next quarter. I'm playing for 10 years from now. We need to be part of promoting economic value in the continent <coughs> so that our consumers are in Africa. And, you know, that's good for my company. It's also good for Africa. That's what I like to focus on. Excellent, excellent. Um, so By the uh, way, uh, Mr. President, uh, I am going to mention to my wife uh, what you said about all the great diamonds coming from Bali. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're going to be making a visit very, very soon. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, President Arama, one, one more question for you. Yesterday uh, for the session, there was a lot of talk about the CFTA and how it's going to impact the continent. Uh, would you please touch on how you see it impacting the business of sports as well? Yeah, what the AFCFTA does is literally to kind of integrate the continent, uh, open, the, open the, the, uh, the economy of the continent. Uh, the agreement enables so many things to be done, including the Pan-African Payment and Settlement System, which we've developed that makes it easier to pay for goods and services across borders. Just that alone, can do so much, even for, 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 for video or games and all the, all the, the gaming that uh, you talked about. It makes it possible for somebody uh, in Botswana who, who, who is wealthy because of diamonds uh, <laughs> to, uh, to watch um, uh, a game being played, say, in Mali. Some people playing games in order as a kind of a local wrestling if you commercialize it. They can watch it, and they don't need to go look for a special credit card to pay for it. They just use whatever, uh, either they, they use a local card who do pay in Pula. Right. They don't have to look for any currency uh, because they have a the domestic case that payment. So that is one magic that CFT will, will, will open up. Uh, so the economy becomes integrated. We can pay for goods and services across borders. So that then makes it possible for us to have an integrated market. That big market you're talking about, it will begin yeah. then to emerge. We become consumers of whatever we produce within that big border of Africa. 
Thank you. Um, so last question for you, Tamika. So Strauss said that he's playing for the next 10 years. In the next year or two, what do you expect to see this, uh, uh, for, for this sector, for the sports business? What, what would you like to see, um, given where you sit? No, absolutely. Well, for sure, we will see tremendous growth in Africa. There's no question. When we talk about unstoppable, yeah. There's no question that we are moving in that direction. Just like Strauss mentioned, focusing on the future of basketball, you know, he really does get it, by the way, because <laughs> he put the first union ever in 2K24, so mm -hmm. we are actually represented in the game. Well, because Tamika's actually in the game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm in the game, and CJ, and our union, and that's so important, particularly for our kids. So we talk a lot about generational wealth, well, for our players, generational wealth is not just financial. It's about educating them. It's about giving them the proper infrastructure. That's what creates wealth into the future. So that's what I think we're going to see in the next couple of years is we're going to see education will continue to be the equalizer, but we will also see the investments being made by our players, investments being made by the NBA to make sure that we are expanding what we can do on the continent. Fantastic. Okay, so I think we're running a bit uh, short on time. So I think from what you've heard from the panelists, sports is an important uh, part of the continent, not only from an entertainment perspective, but also from a business perspective. So I think this is just the beginning of the conversation. I hope that with what you've heard here, we're all going to go and look at how we can contribute to the growth of this sector. And we as Silverbacks, we, like I said earlier, we've invested in the Cape Town Tigers and we're doing some interesting things with our sports our platform. And I think that it is, uh, again, I put on my investor hat, it is an exciting uh, sector and I look forward to all of us taking a part of it. Thank you so much. Thank you.